I knew I was right not to give up on Lubor. He'll make a wonderful man. So, your given name is Clive. I heard Lubor use it when he spoke to you. I'll be sure to write to Randalar and propose that Lord Clive Underhill of the League of Merchants be decorated for his services to the Republic. So, you're given... Run like the wind.
Ready, go. I made sure our fallen comrades were laid to rest. And they can rest easy, knowing that their sacrifice wasn't in vain. That justice was done. As for us survivors, well, we've just got to keep at it. Keep the family together. For their sakes. I made sure our fallen comrades were laid to rest. I'd have followed Quentin to that manor if I could have done, and I'll keep following him now. Quentin's gonna build us a new Lost Wing, and I'm gonna help. Quentin, I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. The people of Lost Wing are my family and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so am I. And why might that be? What he's asking. How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about, we'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? You said yourself we're family, don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? That only we are worth saving? Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves, and if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <sighs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Port Isolde. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Reckon Master Quinton could argue an egg back up a hen's quim if he set his mind to it. Reckon Master Quinton could argue an egg back up... Any statesmen we speak with are liable to resist our entreaties if they feel that what little power remains to them is at stake. They must be dealt with skillfully. I shall not repeat the errors of my past. Any statesman we speak with... Uh... Uncle, I bring good news. The Field Marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has! I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? 
Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battle axe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now... I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. Oh, says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen. Perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your Discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company were you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... How dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this... Fine! Upstanding young gentleman! Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! Once more unto the breach. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands, but the well-being of her people lies in ours, and we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, my quill.
Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities, that you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I uh, want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. Sorry, can't take you where you need to get to, but the Argo and me will be waiting when you get back. Sorry, can't take you where you need to get to. What do you think that thing is? And how the hell is Sid gonna deal with that? father's helm in your chambers. He should be with you when his vision is finally realized. Thank you, Joshua. For everything. Ah, don't mention it. Brother. flame burns in your heart. To the end, brother. Nazaire might at least have mentioned where in Northreach he'd be testing this recruit. And what can I do for you? And a fine, fine day to you. A fortress? And who'll pay for that? Who do you the think? garrison is threatening to pull their sentries from the markets if we don't cooperate. I would speak with this duke. I saw the captain just now. He wasn't wearing his uniform. He has... Your town needs you. I need you. Do you have a moment, Clive? What is it? It's the Duke, unsurprisingly. His eminence has assumed full control of the garrison and put every able-bodied man to work on the fortifications. The town was left all but unguarded, so Philippe was compelled to form a citizen's watch to fill the void. And though my dear boys have been characteristically willing to assist him in this, they want for bodies. So I was wondering, if you would lend them your strength, that the people of Northreach might sleep easier, if only for a few nights. When you have time, then. Do you what? It's the tender so. Of course. Whatever you need. Thank you, Clive. What would I do without you? Philippe told me he had men stationed at... Where can I find the mistress of this establishment? Here, my lady. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? 
My name is Sabine, and it is my displeasure to be the daughter of the Duke of Oriflam, who I understand is causing you and your town no small amount of trouble. I wish to speak to you about what might be done. Very well. Let us speak. I trust you'll forgive me, Clive. Absolutely. Our conversation can wait. Please, proceed. As you know, my father is a most overbearing and supercilious man, and I join you in objecting to his every action. Indeed, I owe you my thanks for continuing to argue against his reckless plans. Yet I fear he is not one to be swayed by reason. No, he must be made to face the consequences of his actions. And who would make him do this? I would. Myself and several other like-minded individuals. Were you to join us, we would surely have the strength to drive him from Northreach for good. Does that not seem a trifle... drastic? Drastic action is precisely what is called for. Unless you are content to see your people downtrodden and dispossessed. My father would have it that citizens exist only to serve the Empire. That they should be forced to make every sacrifice to ensure her revival. But he is wrong. It is not the people who must serve the Empire, but the Empire who must serve her people. <sighs> He's always been like this. Scornful of the opinions of anyone he judged beneath him. But he cannot be allowed to ride roughshod over the common folk any longer. We must fight him. By all possible means. Fight him? No. My purpose is to quell the tension in Northreach, not to stoke it. Respectfully, my lady, our only chance of saving this town depends upon every one of us uniting against our common enemy. Your father and his followers included. While I understand your frustrations, I cling to the hope that he may yet be won round. False hope, I assure you. But I see that your mind is made up. I shall bother you no longer. If you will extend me the same courtesy, I bid you good day. She certainly has spirit. Indeed. But unfortunately for us, that spirit is only likely to harden the Duke's resolve, which may be enough to seal the fate of this town. Not that she cares. This is all about her and her father. Families. I'm sorry, where were we? Ah, yes. I was about to tell you of Philippe's plans for the town watch. But perhaps it's better that you heard them from him. I believe he's in the market, if you'd be so kind as to seek him out. Right away. It's just a pity I cannot join you. I'd like to see the two of you in action together. The task of organizing the town watch has been taking up a great deal of Philippe's time of late. And the rest he spends guarding the main gate to the markets. You'll find him there, most likely. The task of organ... Nervous. Is it all right to be nervous? I don't care either way. So long as you do as I tell you. Well met, Sid. This is the initiate. Ember, present yourself. At your service, master. Please, just Sid. There are no masters here. Your life is your own. Oh, of course. Thank you, Sid. The sergeant says you'll be evaluating me at my trial. To become a scout, yes. You are aware of the dangers inherent in that role. I am. But I swore I'd face them. Just like the man who saved my life. And who would that be? Gav. It was him who found me and freed me. No magic, no support, just one man and his nose. Came and sniffed me out. It taught me what one man can do if he puts his mind to it. 
and I've been training ever since, so that one day I can be someone's saviour, just like Gav was mine. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be flattered. You clearly have good intentions, Ember. And it sounds like you're under no illusions. Stick to this path and you'll make a fine curse breaker. So, what? Have I passed? <sighs> you haven't even started yet. Now listen. Not far from here is an Imperial lookout, Eastwatch. The guards there record all their sightings in a logbook. You are to find it and bring it here. And bring it here, right. Anything else? No. Sneaking into a heavily guarded Imperial outpost and stealing the logbook would be quite sufficient. You will need to assess the situation, determine a point of entry, create a distraction and effect an escape, all without being discovered and thrown into an Imperial oubliette. Ember, Gav isn't our best scout because he can do everything. It's essential that you know your limits. Know my limits, right. I won't let you down. It shouldn't be as dangerous as I made out. But keep a weather eye on him all the same, would you? On my way. All right, Ember. Impress me. Even now, the capital has moved. The Empire keeps the watchtowers overlooking royal meadows and the Sea of Grace Mand. But only by a skeleton crew. It's a trial, not a death sentence. Even now, the capital has... Moved. The Empire keeps the watchtowers overlooking royal meadows and the Sea of Grace Mand. Oh, Let's go. Damn it. Ember, draw your sword! Oh, God! Then run! Uh, um. If you want him, you'll have to go through me. Ember, are you? Gone. Of course. Scouts really are a rare breed. <sighs> Back to Northreach it is then.
I didn't expect you back so soon. Where is Ember? How did he fare? I... thought I'd find him with you. He must have fled. I followed him to Eastwatch, where I found him being set upon by a wild Avis. He was just standing there. Didn't even draw his sword. I had to step in and take care of things. But by the time I had, he was nowhere to be seen. I assumed he'd set off in your direction, but... Apparently not. Oh, I'm sorry, Sid. I knew the boy had a nervous streak, but he seemed like... The right man for the job? I believe this is the logbook you tasked me with retrieving. Hey, How did you... Don't you tell me you breached the tower while Sid was busy saving your skin. What? Wasn't that what you asked me to do? To bring the thing back without getting caught? He has you there, Nazaire. And he did it all on his own. But Sid, he... He did what he thought was best. And now I have to decide whether I agree. Of course. We'll await your evaluation back at the hideaway. Don't you leave my sight. Yes, Sergeant. This won't be an easy decision. You should have seen him. The thing didn't stand a chance. Yeah, neither did you, I hear. Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Yes. Welcome back. Trip wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I hope. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. But from what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. No, they most certainly did not. Ember lost his nerve in the face of a beast of prey, but he didn't lose heart. He pressed on, and he achieved his aim. And is that not what we ask of our scouts? Indeed it is. Thank you for your honest appraisal, Sid. The fact remains, however, that Ember will not always have a battle-hardened warrior on hand to pluck him from the jaws of peril. All I have gleaned from this trial is that without someone watching his back, Ember is little more than a liability. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. But I'd say he's due a second chance, nonetheless. After all, he did do as you asked. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade, and any mind can conquer its fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that log, young Ember here has shown he has a conk and an half. Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Fine. One more chance. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. I'll show you. Just you wait! Delft as a brush there, Mum. But his heart's in the right place. Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, we've been leaning on him for far too long. That time the curse breakers took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. You couldn't hurt. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will you? I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a day off. <sighs> Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. Forgive me, Sid. This did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things rarely do these days. But that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. I, I will, Sid. Thank you. Sid, I wanted you to know. 
I will be taking personal responsibility for Ember's combat training. And I will not let you down. I'll take my chances in the wild before I let some noble take any more of my coin. I'll take my chances in the wild before I let some noble take any more of my coin. We are stuck on our stores, and we're just So you are content to abandon... Please, I beseech you. If you're a true son of Northreach, you must fight to defend your home. That's exactly what I am doing, milady. Or trying to, at least. The land is crawling with fiends, and someone has to keep watch. Even when our true enemy is hiding in the garrison? Fine. You're not the only able-bodied man in Northreach. Thank you so much for your help. She cornered you too, then? Could hardly get a word in edgeways. Like father, like daughter, eh? She made an uninvited appearance at the Vale earlier, hoping to convince the Dane to join her in fermenting rebellion. <laughs> I bet that went well. Her ladyship seems to have a way with people. Anyway, what brings you here? Our mutual friend thought you might welcome some help. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> right as always. In fact, you're just the man. We've had some reports, you see. Sightings of, uh, you know what. They're back. Seems that way. All over, too. We haven't been able to confirm anything yet, but if you're willing, you could go and see what's what. Right. Where should I look? You know Grieger's Weep? One of the sightings places them somewhere on its shores. I'm on my way. Thank you, Clyth. I'll look into one of the other sightings. Let's rendezvous back here later. that a test, Ultima. Clive, it's me. Are you all right? I am. But it seems the reports were true. The thralls have returned. I dispatched the few that I found, though. Well, that's something, I suppose. But what were they doing south of town? They all came from the north last time. We might be able to fend off an attack from one side or the other, but from both? Do you have eyes in the north? Some. I should probably go and have a look, though, just to be sure. Now, you head back to Northridge. I want you there just in case war breaks out while I'm away. What do you mean? 
Her ladyship's been busy working her magic on the townspeople. Stirring up ill feeling towards her father. But she'll have her marching on the barracks if we're not careful. What? This is exactly what the dame was afraid of. I'll do what I can to calm things down. Be careful out there, all right? Don't worry, I'm not like you. One sniff of those things and I'm running back to town screaming blue murder. Do you not see, father? The people of Northreach have given enough, and only a fool would ask for more. Listen to me, Sabine. Where would our people be without their country, hmm? The Empire is their sword and their shield. It is she that ensures they can live without fear. And now she teeters on the brink. Without their sword, how will the people fight? Without their shield, how will they protect their kin? Can the unarmed stand against the advancing hordes? No. But there is yet hope. A new shield, a new sword. A new empire. We can rebuild Sandbrek, just as Great Grieger wills it. Perhaps we could, father. But we don't want to. Not if it is built on the broken backs of the people. Please, let us not quarrel in the street. You must see that no good will come of this. Our fight is not with each other, but with the threat that draws ever closer to our gates. A threat that your sword has yet to rid us of, your eminence. You will hold your tongue, whore! You may have filled my daughter's head with your heresy, but I will not be corrupted! Corrupted? Your daughter's opinions are her own, as you would know if you had ever deigned to listen to her. At least I hope they are your opinions, and not posturing born of a family feud. Northreach deserves better than that. Northreach deserves better than you, Carla! Yes, I know who you are! The slut of Twinside who bedded a brandit. <laughs> Jealous, are you? That a woman might choose a bearer over a pious man of Grieger. Clive! I met a swarm of thralls coming south from Oriflam. Hundreds of them. Too many to count. God, oh, fuck you. No. <laughs> Work on the fortifications has scarcely begun. We will retreat to Cair Norvent and there make our stand. Did you hear me? That was an order. While this is but a heartfelt plea, let us make our stand here and protect our homes. Protect those that we love. Together, for Northreach! Northreach! Yes! 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 You heard the dame. What are we waiting for? Pikemen to the gates, archers to the roofs. Quickly, come on! But she is but a common... Whore, yes. And we'd follow her to the gates of hell. The men have their orders, and they look like following them. I got them spaced out at regular intervals. Whichever direction the thralls strike from, there'll be someone there to meet them. Thank you, Philippe. Rest assured, the people will play their part. The herbalist has donated her stock of medicines to me. Should any of your men be injured, take them to the Vale. We'll see to them there. Thank you, my lady. I will. 
I'll play my part too. You still want for numbers. Unlike the enemy. I only hope I can go some way to evening the odds. Philippe, can I leave the south in your hands? I doubt the thralls by the lake were the last of their number. Of course. I'll lead a party down that way so we don't get taken by surprise. What about you? I'll make my way up the road to Oriflam. I fought a few of these things. And while I can't promise to hold them all back, I should be able to thin the herd. All right. But take care. Thank you. Both of you. You can thank us when it's over. Till then, madame. See that you come back safe, Clive. And we shall do everything we can to ensure the town is still here when you do. See that you come back safe, Clive. I have served the Duke for many years, and I hope to do so for many more. But I cannot turn my back on these people. Our people. I have served the Duke for many years. Wherefore would you forsake me? Father. If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. You all right? Something troubling you? Uh, no more than usual. It's just... Edda's baby will be coming soon, and I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north, families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. 
Yeah, I'll let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Ed is due any day now, and I don't know if I'll be ready in time. I expect I'll think of something. Oh, and I'll say it was from you too, if you like it. It'll mean more coming from the head of the family. Oh, you all right? Something troubles. I'm back. Yeah, so... Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? A good look charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's not luck in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. I'd try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need, a feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. I was gonna start by asking around with traveling traders plying the northern borders. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend, Clive. I won't forget this. I can't say I've ever seen a silver chocobo myself, but I have seen one of their feathers. Look just like a normal one, only silver, obviously. Well, grey. Can't say I've ever seen a silver chocobo myself, but I have seen one of their feathers. Clive, my boy. Do you know why? It was not twenty summers past. Your mother, the Duchess. But above all... And so you see... That's my boy! Joshua, I read your message. You're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different, but since we've returned from Drake's spine, I've felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. To let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever, that you still need her. But how to do that? When last we were truly close, we were but children. Of course. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the Duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill? <laughs> to see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pot boys combing the countryside. <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> a thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say, he was none too pleased. Then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. True. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive? I can't say my travels ever took me back to Man's Hill. I'm curious to see how it has fed. I can't say my travels ever took me back to...
preparing poultices for the injured. We're ready. Tell us what you want. And you're here to fight. If fight I must, then fight I shall. Those with the worst wounds are to be treated here. I hear the hand is laid up. We can help with the wounded. Hopefully. If any get by, you can trust we'll be here to meet them head on. If any get by, you can trust we'll be here to meet them head on. Them. Not for long. That looks to be the last of them. I wonder how the others fared. Better hurry back to town. Come on, Toggle. to see you. And you. The road to Oriflam is clear. How did you and your men fare? Well, we ended up fighting for our lives down by the lake. Took a few nicks, but nothing the girls at the Vale can't put right. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems we've survived. For the time being, at least. I thank you both for answering the call. You were right. And I was wrong. About everything. I had thought that the 
only way to unite the people was under the banner of empire. That without a strong hand to guide them, they would drift apart, to be borne hither and yon by the eddying currents of fate. But you brought them together, not by force, nor by the exercise of goddess-given authority, but by simply being one of them. By knowing what they feel, because you feel it yourself. Our purpose was ever the same, Your Eminence. You were merely distracted by a loftier vision of empire and glory, while our eyes beheld matters closer to home. <laughs> you have the right of it again, as did you, Sabine. His Radiance said it himself. Sandbrek is naught without her citizens. I forgot that. And I am sorry. I'm sorry too, Father. I should never have taken things so far. I only wanted you to understand how the people felt. How I felt. But my anger got the better of me. Do not blame yourself, my dear. This was my doing. I should have listened to you. To all of you. Your Eminence. Your Ladyship. I do not doubt that you came here with the best of intentions. But I believe the same could be said of us all. We all want safety, security, prosperity. Not just for Northreach, but for the entire realm. And we may yet achieve it. If only we work together. Will you join us in this? Yes. We shall. Thank you, Your Eminence. Now that that is settled, I must go and see to the wounded. The Vale's doors are always open to any soldier in need of relief. And today there are more than ever before. Madam Isabel is a rare soul indeed. In these dark times, I see that it is not men like me who should lead the realm, but women like her. You're right. If only I'd listened to her when I had the chance. Forgive me for saying so, my lady, but you still do. The dame said it herself. We can turn things around. We just have to work together. And that goes for you, too. You're one of us now. One of you? Well said, Captain. Let this be a new beginning. Not only for Sandbreck, but for us. Well, since there's nothing more to be done here, I should see if Isabel needs any help moving the wounded. You too are a friend of Madame Isabel's, are you not? A sellsword won over to the cause by her brave example. Remarkable. You too are a friend of- I only wanted what was best for Northreach, for Sandbreck, and I still do. But this time, I will go about things the right way, in concert with others, rather than in spite of them. I only wanted what was best for Northreach. Thanks for your help, Clive. We couldn't have done it without you. Now all we need is for their eminences to start pulling their weights. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Clive. How goes the treatment of the wounded? I'd be happy to man one end of a stretcher if it would help. <laughs> You've helped quite enough for one day, Clive. Thank you. Don't mention it. Oh, but I must. After all you've done for this town, it is the very least you deserve. Tell me. 
If Northridge had fallen, what would you have done? A woman of your means could find a home anywhere in the realm. But I sense you would rather have died here. It's a long story. For you, madame, I have all the time in the world. <sighs> Very well. Long ago, I had a life in the Crystalline Dominion. I was Carla then, courtesan to the nobility. So sought after was I that it was only they who could afford my time. Alas, those halcyon days were not to last. For naive as I was, I fell in love with a bearer. He was my master's guard, the gentlest man I have ever known. After they discovered us together, he was whipped bloody and forbidden from ever looking at me again. And so we fled. Not that we had anywhere to flee to. We wandered, aimless and starving, half dreading, half praying that the next day would be our last. Until we found ourselves here, in Northridge. It was the veil that took us in, that fed us, clothed us, and healed our hurts. Those that could be healed, at least. My love was already too far gone. He passed away. He did. Not long after we arrived. But at least we were able to share a few moments of peace before the end. It was the greatest gift I have ever received. But the generosity of this town and her people did not end there. The men and women of the Vale supported me through my grief. Shared in it, though I was still a stranger to them. They treated me like a sister. And so I swore that I would always do the same. That I would return the kindness that Northreach showed me. That I would repay my debt to the Vale. Thank you, Isabel, for sharing this with me. You're a lot like him, you know. Perhaps that is why I have such a soft spot for you. Never stop fighting, Clive. And I shan't either. I know that it will not be easy to keep Northreach together. But our efforts will be rewarded. Just look at us now. The people, the soldiers, even the Duke of Oriflam and his daughter all united in defense of this town that we have come to call our home. And what of you? Can we count on your support too? Always. We have brought Northreach together. Now the fight begins to keep her together. For if this town is to survive, we must all play our part. Including you, Clive. We have brought Northreach together. Now the fight begins to keep her together. For if this town is to survive, the last one. Just a little further. Will you lend me a hand? There is still injured in the markets. <laughs> you held your own out there. Held me up. Those merchants are a vicious lot. Remind me not to cross them. Those merchants are a vicious lot. Remind me not to cross them. I could give you another elixir, but what you really need is a bed. You can't call something yours unless you're willing to fight for it. Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Surf. We all fought for this place. For Northreach. And now no one can take it from us. You can't call something yours unless you're willing to fight for it.
rain fire down on their heads. And what can I do for you? Come back again.